I'm about to try them all on today. Give a review, give my thoughts on them, see if I even fit them now because quarantine did a number on my body. The number of my local fire department because it's the hottest I've ever looked in my entire life. So, I bought every single piece of clothing that I've made on my channel from 2014 to 2021, except for the ones that I don't have, which I may have sold or donated or burned. What's the number of the local fire department again? So by made, I mean anything that has like a significant change to the original form. So anything I've thrift flipped or embroidered or made from scratch, that's included here. I didn't include anything that is iron on transfer because I don't think those are legitimate. Sorry. And in preparation for this video, I also waxed my armpits. Oh! Ah! For you guys. Or is this subconsciously due to the societal pressures caused by the demonization of female body hair? I'm not gonna lie to you, I had to say that sentence like 30 times before I got it right. So, I will be trying on everything from oldest to newest. Let's go! Can we still say that because the baby is, he's, you know? Our first victim. Woo! I feel like that's so raven right now, but backwards. This is from April 2014. And ain't that indicative of the Tumblr aesthetic of the time. This was like all the rage, Brandy Melville, you know. I loved the shirt. I must have worn this like hundreds of times, honestly. And this was one of the first DIYs that I ever did on my channel. This shirt kind of feels like a time capsule and I cherish it dearly. Don't plan on re-wearing it anytime soon, but I'm sure it'll come back in style in like 10 years. So see you then. Honestly, I think that it was very wearable during its time. It was executed well. So I'm gonna rate this eight out of 10 moons. We have another 2014 Tumblr classic. Everyone was wearing these. It was all the rage. I'm pretty sure it was originally from Urban Outfitters. And I painted these daisies with fabric paint. To me, it's like the exact same shirt, but replace the moon with daisies. When I wear this shirt, I envision myself laying in bed, watching the highly saturated DIY room decor videos from My Life is Ava and morning routines from Bethany Moda. It was just a happy time, eight out of 10. And now we're skipping right ahead to 2017. There was a whole chunk in the middle that was Missing. I'm pretty sure I did do DIY clothing, but that was a time where you like would cut the bottom of the t-shirt and like braid it and like there's just absolutely no way that I kept those. Those might have been the ones that I burned. So I remember filming this one in my dorm room at NYU and I wore this shirt a lot because I actually lived in New York City and I was like, oh, how authentic of me. I think it was painted on very well. Obviously you don't wear it anymore, but indicative of the time. This is clearly that varsity letter trend that actually has really stood the test of time. Too bad I dropped down and didn't actually get a letter for graduation. So anyway. I will give this nine dropouts out of 10. We're keeping it in the same year of 2017. This is a graphic moon tank that's like ombre. Honestly, I don't think I wore it very much at the time, but I kind of want to wear it again. I think it's really cute actually. And I think this like graphic-y Y2, I'm not sure if it's like very Y2K-y, but I think it's very cute for some reason. And maybe I can like layer it on top of a long sleeve. I don't remember how I made this. Why does it look so clean? I think I might've used like sticker paper and like cut out the little details and then use like a little sponge to paint the paint in. I think it looks pretty good. I need something that's like not good so I can like rate lower because I'm just hyping myself up too much and I think my ego is gonna explode out of this room. I will give this nine. No, I think I'm rating these too high. Damn it, nine stars out of 10. Okay, this next one is from the same video and it's this Disney crew neck sweatshirt that I also painted. Don't sue me, Disney, please. I'm just, you have way more money than I do. I wore this so much. I wore this to death, literally. I didn't show this in the video, but there's actually a hole in this right here. And that's because I was trying to scrape off some of the excess paint with an X-Acto knife and I cut the shirt. Who would have known that an X-Acto knife would cut fabric? It looks really cute, but execution wise, could have been better because there's a little hole in it. So I'm gonna give it eight Mickeys out of 10. Uh -huh. 
We are now in 2018, in the era of thrift flips. This was my first thrift flip on my channel. Honestly, kind of a disgrace to even call this a thrift flip. I just took like a white t-shirt and painted three stripes on it. Like literally the audacity I had. I think it's actually pretty cute in and of itself. Well, is it? It's literally just three stripes. I mean, there's not much I can really say about it. It's pretty basic. I don't know, it is what it is. Six stripes out of 10. Okay, this is my second thrift flip and honestly, I should wear this shirt more often than I do. I can't recall if I've actually ever worn this shirt before. This was during the time that I wasn't super comfortable with sewing yet. So I actually fabric glued this zipper on and honestly, it looks pretty good. The zipper is the only thing that I did to the shirt. So I mean, the rest of the shirt is just, it looks good because that was the original shirt. But for what it is, eight zippers out of 10. I think I'm gonna stop using the random rating system after this. And now we have our first sewed piece sewn. I am a dropout after all. Guys, I have no idea where the bottom piece of this outfit is. I made a skirt with it. I could not tell you where it is, but I'm pretty sure I donated the skirt. I don't know why I didn't just keep it if I was gonna keep the shirt. I think I just didn't really wear the skirt as much. But alas, I would say that this was kind of like a milestone for me. It was my first sewing project and it was my favorite of the first thrift flip video. It's definitely like the style of the time, the off the shoulder, although, you know, we still got some NASA level liftoff going, but it's actually really comfortable and I, I think I wore this quite a bit. I will give this a nine out of 10. Well, no, I'm gonna dock like half the points because I don't have the skirt. I will give this a four out of 10. Okay, that you don't deserve that. I'll give this a six out of 10. Okay, this next one is from my second thrift flip video. Ah! Okay, let's, I mean, let's talk. Okay, so honestly, before I put it on, I thought I was gonna hate it way more than I do, but I don't hate it as much. I mean, I think it's just like the style of the time, but I would not wear this right now. I think that if I were to improve it, I would make a better neckline for it. Just not the vibe and it's so, not practical. And then every time you gotta pull it back down, what were we on? And I know it wasn't Jingle Jangle because Riverdale was not cursing us yet. I flipped this from like a men's shirt. My sewing skills were not super good at the time. I literally didn't even finish sewing it. Like I just got lazy, I guess. <laughs> they just, it, this is just like a raw hem and I can literally see the elastic. And uh, yeah, I think I also did that here. Five out of 10. I love this dress. It's the first dress that we're featuring in this video. I will say that the execution, the way that I sewed it was not the best. Okay, it was very rookie moves. So these are all buttons, but like I basically sewed the top shut so that you can't like unbutton it. It's just like a dress that you have to put on over your head. I also sewed the bottom shut too. I think I just did that to save time and I also didn't know what I was doing. The fit is also not like super form fitting. Um, it's definitely on the looser side. I think this was originally a men's button up shirt. I think this was definitely the hardest sewing project that I had on my channel up until that point. But I think with my limited skills at the time, this was like super challenging. And you know what, I'm proud of myself for getting it done. I'll give it an eight out of 10. Okay, this one, you know what this one is giving? You know that new Addison Rae movie? If you haven't seen it, you've probably seen a commentary video on it. You know how they have that one scene where they have the Old Navy ad? Why is Old Navy not paying me? I actually think this is pretty cute. And I think this is actually like kind of still a trendy style, like the half zip and the cropped cinch waist sweatshirt vibe. I just wish that the overall shirt was bigger. I'm pretty sure this was like a little boy's shirt cause like the little boys and men's section are my favorite sections to shop at at the thrift store. So there's nothing I could really do about the size of it, but what did I actually do to this? Oh my God, I think I just cropped it and added an elastic at the bottom. Not super innovative, five out of 10. We've got our first pants feature. These are little boy jeans that I just painted some checkers onto the side of. I think before wearing these pants, I was convinced that I had the body shape of a little boy, but I think the ass cheek rip indicated otherwise. I did not plan for, 
Oh, I remember what happened. Okay, so when I bought this at the store, I didn't notice that there was like a tiny little rip right here. And then so when I was out and about one time, I was downtown Vancouver walking around. It felt like a movie moment because like you don't really think it will happen to you, but I sat down and I just heard a reek. Y'all ever hear a rip that sounds like that before? Actually, at the time, it was a very trendy thing to have a rip right below the butt, but it's just not something that I'm super comfortable with. So I retired these. Farewell. A six out of 10. Who wears the pants in the relationship? Not me, because I am single. As single as you are. So I transformed a pair of hospital scrub pants into these baggy cargo pants thing. I saw the scrubs at the thrift store and I was like, <gasps> I have a vision. And I think it turned out pretty well. I don't have the original chain that I made anymore, but I made it out of keychain rings. It doesn't look super good on me though, so. 7 out of 10. We got a two-piece. Technically the second two-piece in this video, except the first one I lost the, the bottom part, so it, I guess it's the first two-piece. This gives off rich tennis girl vibes, which when I was younger, that's all I wanted to be. I actually really like this shirt. I wear it all the time. I don't wear the skirt that often because I just don't really wear skirts and also it's kind of like a flimsy material that's a little bit see-through. Honestly, the sewing is not the best. I kind of just did the bare minimum. Oh, I do like this little asymmetrical moment on the skirt though. I thought it was a really nice touch with a little slit on the side. Scandalous! A little thigh to seduce your crush. I don't have a crush. If I were to do this again, I would have improved this skirt. Probably would have added lining. Eight out of 10. Anyway, my next creation seems a little um, of bad taste knowing the things that we know now. A couple years ago, I made James Charles's Met Gala outfit designed by Alexander Wang. A match made in heaven in hell. It's made up entirely of safety pins and took me, I don't remember how long, but it was brutal. It was such a torturous experience. Honestly, I think it turned out pretty cool for like the amount of time and effort that I put into it, except uh, these little sleeve things, I wish I had more time to like actually make them out of safety pins. Okay, I also realized I never devised a way to like actually attach it to my neck, so I just, I'm just gonna have to hold it up. If we separate this from the people that it originated from, I'm pretty proud of this piece. I will give it a 9 out of 10 just because of how much work I put into it. So yeah, I will never wear it, but I will keep it in case I need some safety pins in the future. All right, moving on to something less contra- Well, this is one of my favorites that I've made. It's this like cheat leopard cheat animal print little crop top with attempted puff sleeves that are not actually very puffy now that I'm wearing it. This was also my first time doing smocking slash ruching and I did it in the back to give it that stretchy effect. And I also did it for the top portion of the shirt too. I really like it, although when I wear it, it does ride up a lot. If I were to improve it, I would add maybe like an underwire now. It looks a little bit rough in some places cause you can see the stitching, but I really like this shirt. I think it's really cute. 7 out of 10. I love this dress, guys. Is this the first dress? <gasps> it's the first dress! I love this dress. It's the first dress that we're featuring in this video. I love this dress. I think it's so cute. I transformed this from an oversized men's Tommy Hilfiger t-shirt. Honestly, it's not like super flattering on me because horizontal stripes in and of itself kind of make you look wider. I remember this being a relatively easy flip. Overall, I will give this an eight out of 10. I'm really hungry right now. I kind of want chicken nuggets, but it's like literally 1 a.m. Hi, um, can I get a six piece chicken nugget? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So what was supposed to be a mid-filming snack turned into a post-filming snack? 
on to one of my probably easier thrift flips. I just transformed like a super long midi dress into a A-line skirt. I think it's pretty cute. Oh, I remember that this video was no sew, so everything was like fabric glued and honestly, pretty intact. I don't really wear this that much though, so seven out of 10. I actually really like this next one. It's kind of like a ruched baby blue tank top situation, except it's super baggy. I think if I were to redo it, I would take in the top a little bit and also just like take in some of the fabric at the sides. Oh my God, wait. <gasps> okay, oh, I remember. Okay, so the video was like no sewing machine thrift flips. And so I literally hand sewed the elastics in there and that took so long, I remember. Honestly, brain power on that video was at 100. Obviously, I think it would have looked better if I used a sewing machine, but for what it is, I think it's pretty good, and I will give it an eight out of 10. This yellow two-piece is probably top three of clothes that I've ever made. I think it's so cute. I feel so like elegant and like trendy. Although I will say, craftsmanship on this is not that great. First of all, I cut the buttonholes way too big. So I, okay, literally, I won't even touch it. I won't touch it. Why is it holding up now? Okay, if I just... See, I didn't, I don't mean to flash you guys, but maybe subconsciously I did. I think I definitely want to go back in and like fix the buttonholes and stitch them up a bit to make it smaller because I basically like can't wear this in public unless I wear it like a, as a cardigan and a tank top underneath. Also, since this was a no sewing machine project, well, even with the sewing machine, I don't know what I would have done because I had to cut up like a sweater fabric and I'm really not sure how you hem sweaters because there's really not a great way to do it. So I just used fabric glue on the ends to like make sure everything didn't fray, but that makes everything very scratchy and not very stretchable. And overall, it just doesn't look super finished. So if anyone has any tips on that, how to hem sweater material, please let me know because there's so many sweater projects that I wanna do, but I just don't know how to like hem it. But, oh, love this outfit, nine out of 10. Damn it, missed opportunity for a Hemsworth pun. Cause I was talking about hemming. Luke Hemmings, I've made that joke before. You can hems my worth, no. You can hem my, you can, he can hem my worth, no. He can hem. Um, this was my first venture into embroidery. I still think this is so cute. It's funny because originally at the time I embroidered this pair of jeans because I never wore it and I thought it was kind of ugly on me. But now I wear this pair of jeans all the time. So I think it's so cute. Would recommend trying it out. Embroidery is so easy and so fun to me. Nine out of 10. I docked a point because I feel like it's too simple of a project to give myself a 10 for. Elos. If you know, you know. I think this shirt is so cute. I think execution wise, I did a really good job. It's like this puffy embroidery. Like it feels very legit. Now I just look like I'm groping myself. Love the colors. I honestly wish that I made this into merch. It was a very simple thing, but it means a lot to me. So nine out of 10. Look how freaking cute this is. This is another embroidery project. I did little daisies on this bucket hat. Honestly, this is so easy to do and I would recommend all of you guys try it. I actually, oh shoot. I did not do the back. I guess I just got kind of lazy, but like that also means that I can have a plain side and a daisy side and uh, Honestly though, I'll probably dock a couple points because I didn't do the backside. Eight out of 10. It's later on in the day, I'm freezing my ass off. It's six degrees Celsius. I literally have my space heater right here, pumping hot air out. I'm still really cold. We have an embroidered hoodie. Um, Honestly, this one not, is not my favorite. I don't know why, I just don't really like it that much. Like the design is cool, I guess. I just don't really wear it. It's not my vibe. Um, five out of, mm, four out of 10. I'm really cold right now. We got another embroidered shirt. Hashtag save the bees. Honestly, it kind of looks like a mosquito or a moth. I'm freezing right now. So six out of 10. I love this jacket. I think it's a national treasure. It is the hands of, hands of, 
This took me so long, but I think it turned out really cool. Honestly, I don't get to wear it as much as I'd like to just because it's such a statement piece. I'd say it's one of the cooler pieces in my wardrobe. Nine out of 10. This is probably one of my favorites I've ever done. I think I just made it very well and it's very flattering on me, very form fitting. And like, I just want to say, I think that I did such a good job on the ruching on the back. That's why it fits so well because it's like so stretchy. I think I just really like square necklines because boobies, well, recently boobies have been expanding a little bit because like I have been gaining weight in general. Makes the minimal boobies look pretty good. And then the little puff sleeves, like this is so, I love it. I love it. This is technically like a thrift flip, but I basically made it from scratch. Ah, like I need to stop. Well, do I need to? I find it like weirdly comforting to like hold my boobs sometimes, honestly. I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. <laughs> I think it's my first 10 out of 10. I didn't think that I would rate any of them 10 out of 10, but we got another tennis looking shirt up in here. Thoughts? I think it's pretty cute. Again, like this is also one of those occasions where I wish the original shirt was baggier because I think it would be cuter. Otherwise, it's just like very simple. Like I just inserted an elastic on the bottom to like make it cinched and cropped. Um, creativity, really not that high. I executed it well though. It's very structurally sound, I would say, but mm, five out of 10. I may be lactose intolerant, but I will keep wearing these cow prints till the day I die. I love these pants. They actually, they fit me so well now because I cinched them in in the video. And I have been using this technique for so many of my pants and like highly recommend. It just makes your jeans look so good on your waist. What you don't know is I never painted the back. So I don't wear these in public that often just because it's, it doesn't, it's not like a, full-on, full-fledged pair of pants. So I do plan on painting the back. I do think it's really, really cute, but because it's not actually fully executed, seven out of 10. Next we have this serged lettuce hem looking shirt. I think it's like cool and unique for my wardrobe. Okay, here's the reason why I don't actually wear it that often. Okay, this shirt is tickly as hell. I'm super ticklish, so like every movement, like these surged things for some reason make it super ticklish. It's not like scratchy like some sweaters are. It's tick, like I can't just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just tickly. Honestly, I wish I would have done this on a different colored shirt. I think this, this is just like, it, it's, it's kind of vomity, but I think the design of it is cool. Six out of 10. This next one is a two for one, is a double whammy. It's technically two DIYs in one shirt. I tie dyed this white crew neck. I think it was like 2018 or 2017 with acrylic paints and it's still held up, like kind of. It's faded a little bit, but surprisingly it's still there. And then last year I stitched on these letters FTYK, which is my song Falling to Your Knees. If you don't know, I make music also under Gen Z. Check it out. Like I think if I had chosen better fabrics, it would have been a little cuter or like a different crew neck. I'm not really sure. I'm not a huge fan anymore. Four out of 10. We've got another bucket hat. I love bucket hats. I think they're the superior hat. This one I made from jeans and I think it's so cute. The frayed edges, very messy and like carefree nature of the bucket hat is very cool. It is very flimsy, I will say. I have to keep messing with it to give it the right shape. And at some angles, it looks really odd. There's like certain sections that look better than others. Like this, I don't know. It's just you know, do you see the curves? So I think it could have been made better, but this already took me so long to make. So I really don't know what went wrong, but I think it's a very cool 90s look. Nine, well, no, I was like eight and a half out of 10. This is my first 0.5. This is my child, it's my baby. It has life insurance. So this is the first crochet piece I ever made. Technically, it's the first thing that I ever made from scratch, like not a thrift lip. Honestly, for my first crochet project, I think it turned out so 
cute. If you watched that video, you know it took me 80 hours to make. I didn't sleep for like three days. If I were to do it again today, there are a lot of things that I would fix about it. Like the fit isn't ideal. I think the armpit area is just like not my favorite. They're kind of uneven. This part is a little bit tight. I think I didn't measure it properly, but I'm just like so proud of this. And now crocheting is one of my favorite hobbies. I've been crocheting for everybody. I crocheted a bucket hat for my friend for his birthday. I'm crocheting a sweater for another friend for her birthday. There are a lot of mishaps with the sweater, but I don't care. 10 out of 10. I would give myself 11 out of 10 if I could. I mean, I guess I can, so I'll let her some. This is the dress of my dreams, but ironically, it still gives me nightmares. I made this dress for my music video for my song, Someone I Never Had. Go check out the music video to see how it is in action. It's inspired by the Salki puff dress. In the video, I wore a yellow tank top underneath because this is pretty see-through. I made it in less than a day. That's still insane to me. But because I was in such a rush, I really did not care about how good the craftsmanship was. I just needed it to be done. So a lot of the parts are ripping. Right here, there's a, there's a giant hole. And also the lining, you can kind of see it at the bottom. Not super professional, but I think it did the job. The zipper, the back action is also so, well, there's no action. Like, it's so loose. Um, I also just like have never sewn with this kind of mesh organza fabric before, so it's super delicate. Um, obviously, if I were to do it again, I would do more research about that. I am torn because I put so much effort into this and I think it looks really cute, but at the same time, there's so many, like there's so many holes. I'm gonna say seven out of 10 asterisk 9 out of 10 pre-shooting the music video. And those are all the generation DIY clothing creations throughout the years up until now. I really hope to improve in the future, but it's honestly very cool to like look back on basically like a time capsule of my creativity and craftiness through the years. I have acquired the skill to create pieces of clothing that I want to wear. Let me know which ones were your favorites throughout the years. If you've been here since the beginning, thank you so much. That means the absolute world to me. Make sure to check out my music. I would super appreciate that. Follow me on Instagram if you would like to and I will see you guys next time. Bye!